Okay, YouTube, I had some emails come in asking about human anatomy, um, specifically, how do I make a figure that's proportionate, you know, meaning that the, that the height to width ratio is human looking, correct, believable, right? So, here I have my écorché, which is a figure with the, the skin um, removed. And this one was sculpted by Houdon, the great French sculptor. It's, it's a very common cast you'll see in a lot of art classrooms. Um, so I'll reference that. I also have Artistic Anatomy by another Frenchman, Dr. Paul Rocher, who is a surgeon and a sculptor at the Beaux-Arts. So surround yourself with really high quality art stuff. Only look at the best, right? Um, so when you look at the figure, when you look at this beautiful, complex specimen here, um, I think what's seductive and sort of en enticing is the muscles, the anatomy. And a lot of uh, beginner art students, they want to learn all the anatomy. You know, that's, that's, they think that's the secret to making something look good. And the anatomy is very important. However, you need a system to organize the anatomy. So I always say, you know, I have um, doctors in my classes and they might know a lot of the muscles or the tendons or the cartilage or the, the um, glands or the fat pads, but it doesn't necessarily mean they can sculpt or paint. So what is it that organizes you know, this beautiful symphony of, of, um, of anatomy. And really it's the proportions and the geometry. And the Greeks were big fans of geometry. You look at Greek sculpture and it immediately has that very geometric, mathematical, pleasing um, feeling to it. So maybe I can shed some light on uh, how to organize the anatomy today. Um, so one of the main mistakes I see students do is they make the legs too short. So if you want to find a halfway point on a standing figure, typically it's going to be that pubic bone. Okay? Now the pubic bone, you can feel it on yourself. It's not to be confused with the groin. It's actually, um, you know, right above the genitals. So that's the pubic bone right there. And on this figure, this is a rather tall male figure, and the, the legs are a little bit longer than the upper torso and the head. Um, so if someone's tall, a lot of times the height comes from the legs. So that's a really important um, proportional thing to memorize. In the back view, this landmark will be you know, halfway up the uh, vertical fold there, the crack, right? <laughs> so halfway up that pelvic block, you can really feel the, the pelvic block concept on him. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's not straight through to the back. It's going to be halfway up that, glute that gluteus maximus. In other words, the pubic bone in the front is higher than the bottom of the gluteus maximus in the back. So that bottom plane of the pelvic block is, is at an angle. Observe that. Um, some other ways to use proportions in a comparative way is to use the, the head height as a unit of measurement um, around different parts of the body. So a lot of times you'll notice that the, you'll be one head height to the nipple. It's pretty true. His, his chin's down a little bit, so might shorten up the neck. Maybe that's why this is, this is shorter than this, too. So you have um, one head height to the nipple, another head height nipple to navel, and then navel to the bottom of the pelvis, the bottom, the ischium, the haunch bones. So in that sense, your head and torso are five heads tall. Um, 
And then a figure like this was most likely seven and a half heads tall, maybe eight heads tall. We can check. Again, his head is, is sort of angled down, so it might, might um, diminish his height slightly. We can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a little over seven, maybe seven and a half. Okay, so that, that's a way to use the head to check the height of a figure. You can also use the head height as a unit of measurement to, to check width. For instance, from the sternum out to the deltoid, um, you usually have two head heights across the deltoids. The furthest point out on the deltoid is towards the bottom, right before it turns into a tendon. Um, so again, two, two head heights across the, the shoulders. Uh, you'll also find out that there'll be a head height between the two uh, notches there on the ilium. So you can fit a, a human head between those um, ACES points. ACES stands for anterior superior iliac spine. So the ACES, yeah, that's a way to check your hips. And there are others. And if you look in the back of artistic anatomy, you'll find a chart. Looks like this. And he has um, numerous examples of these that you can, you can check for yourself, you can memorize them, and you can find your own. Um, so it's nothing new necessarily. Yeah, that reminds me in the back, you can count down one head height to the bottom of the scapula. So from the, from the bottom of the chin to the bottom of the shoulder blade, that's about a head height. So that would, that would be some, some proportion tips. Again, I notice with my beginner students, the first thing they do is they make the crotch like way down here. I don't know why. Maybe the clay is sagging down. Maybe they just have a misconception about how long the legs are. But um, I just see that a lot. They make the torso way too long. Similarly, I think people make, when they draw the portrait, they make the face section far too long in relation to the top of the head. So within a head, the halfway point tends to be the inside corner of the eye. A lot of people don't think about the eyes being right in the middle of the head, but they usually are. Um, on a man, you know, the face could be a little taller. So proportions are important because they they help you organize the anatomy to know where to put it. They also tell you the age of a person. In other words, a child um, will have different proportions than an adult. I mean, a baby might just be three heads long, right? That's why they look kind of cute and funny. Um, whereas an adult could be eight heads tall, seven heads tall. So they tell you that the age, maybe an older person is, is more compressed and, and starting to, to uh, hunch over. Um, they tell you the sex, whether it's a male or female, generally speaking. Um, you know, a man will have um, wider shoulders, narrower hips. Female will have wider hips, narrower shoulders. Generally speaking, it could be that they're the same. Some women have broad shoulders, narrow hips. Some men have, have small shoulders. So, but generally speaking, you can say it will it will um, describe male or female. Um, what else does proportions tell you? It'll tell you the body type. Like I said, whether someone has that, like sort of big broad shoulders or slopey weak shoulders or, you know, short torso, long torso. Um, it'll also tell you like somebody's lifestyle, you know, when you get into to, to fat and, uh, you know, whether they're out in the field laboring or sitting on the couch all day eating potato chips, that's going to affect the proportion of the person, you know. So your lifestyle affects your, your look just as your genetics do. 
Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it all adds up to that. So that's just a little bit on proportions. You know, two, I'll give you two more handy tips. Um, you know, they say your hand is about as big as your face, right? That's a pretty good one. So people tend to make hands too small. Also, feet people tend to make too small. The length of your foot should be a little bigger than your head. Now, maybe on some people it's exactly the same, but what you'll find is the length of the foot is a little taller than the head. So feet are big, you know, and I don't think they get their credit. Um, one other thing I'll say, and then I'll, I'll switch topics, is something I found is the width of the, um, the knee is, is about the width of the neck. Or the width of the temple is the same as the neck, the same as the knee. So I think people underestimate the um, the massive quality of, of the um, of the knee bones, right? The femur and the tibia. So don't make your knees real pinchy. Make them make them very robust. And like I said, it's mostly bone. And in general, the skeleton will dictate pretty much all the anatomy. If you think about the skeletal system as a internal framework. Um, endoskeleton, it's a superstructure for everything else because all the rest of the anatomy is soft. Um, it's either muscle or tendon or ligament or gland or you know skin. So um, I'm starting to appreciate the study of, of, of the skeleton more and more as I, as I study and, um, and uh, hopefully get better at this. So that's a little bit on proportions some helpful landmarks to guide you along and um, these are called calipers really good right way to check to check you know comparative measurements you know again i can do that that head height across the deltoids and there are numerous other other um, you know proportional checks you can find in the back of Rocher's artistic anatomy so like I said, you have the gross anatomy, which is what a doctor would study. You have your proportions. Uh, one thing I could touch on is rhythms, and rhythms also help you organize anatomy. So, you know, there's a certain music to form, a certain poetry to nature, and you can find it in these long rhythmic relationships. So, so one of my favorites is to go from like maybe the front of the forehead, imaginarily, to the back of the rib cage and then follow that imaginarily through to the front of the quadricep, and then maybe that'll end you up on the back of the calf and then to the foot, right? So just to do that one more time on this standing side, um, if I go from the, the, let's see, which way should I start? You could start with the front of the forehead. Front of the forehead imaginarily to the back of the, of the rib cage. You have to use your imagination now, going, going through the hip to the front of the quad to the back of the, gastrocnemius and then right into that foot. There's a certain, you know, serpentine S shape there. Um, another, another rhythm you can observe is, is the rhythm of the, you know, the taper of the arm getting wider as it comes up and flowing into the neck. You know, that, that's a very um, graceful relationship. So, um, you know, the top of your, your arm, your deltoid should, have, should be related to the width of your neck. Maybe they're the same. But there's some kind of arcing relationship there. Just as this arc's going this way, the whole body's arcing the other way as it comes down to that standing foot. So I think um, rhythmic relationships can help organize the anatomy just as much as proportions. And then finally what you'll have is um, geometric planes. And that's the real thing that I think is missing in today's modern um, art education is the emphasis on geometry. And I might have to do another video on that because it's, it's sort of a bigger topic. But um, in a way, the, the geometry organizes the anatomy in a mathematical sense. So you know, there's an old saying that um, you know, there's knowledge and there's wisdom. So it doesn't take a lot of IQ to, to accumulate knowledge and facts, but wisdom is the ability to organize knowledge. 
So very few people can put all this together, like I said, into a symphonic expression. That's why you need not just the gross anatomy, memorizing all the muscles, but you need to memorize the proportions, those, those beautiful organic rhythms, and geometry. And I think the best book for geometry would be John Vanderpool, The Human Figure. So I think next video we'll talk about geometry.